that's crazy. That's obvious interference from this one. Look how the EEG changes every time I press the intensity setting. I am so pumped this actually worked. This opens up a whole new range of possibilities. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. In this channel, we take a look at bleeding edge new neural technologies that you can combine with ancient techniques like meditation to supercharge your brain. One of the coolest things about this field right now is the explosion of neuro wearables. There's so many of them coming out. Devices that track your brain waves using EEG or near infrared light or other modalities. Devices that are influencing your brain waves through electrical stimulation or magnetic influence. And what's really cool now is we can start combining these devices to take a look at will they work together? Do they influence each other? What's the best way to combine them to get the best effects for your meditation or other cognitive practices? So one of the biggest questions that I've gotten recently since I put out a couple of videos on this device, the NeoRhythm, which is a mid-level intensity transmedic stimulation device, is can you use the Neo Rhythm with the Muse headband that tracks EEG signals. And we're gonna take a look at a couple of different experiments throughout this video to investigate that. And I'm really excited about that because we're gonna take a look at a lot of different caveats. Can you link both of these devices to the same device through Bluetooth? Should you use two different devices? What app should you use? Should you use the regular Muse app or should you use Mind Monitor? And does the magnetic influence from the Neo Rhythm actually affect the EEG signal? to the Muse? And how does the Neo Rhythm compare to a device like the Halo Sport? And how does that affect the signals on the devices? So we're gonna take a look at all those different questions and find some really interesting things along the way, as well as some great conclusions at the end of the video. So stick around. Now, one of the first questions that I had about this, if I was going to run these experiments, is can I connect my Muse headband and my Neo Rhythm to my smartphone at the same time? Now, I think that it depends on what smartphone you have, but I think that most smartphones actually are are able to pair at least two different Bluetooth devices at the same time. And that's what I found. I had the iPhone 11 and I was able to pair both the Muse and the Neo Rhythm at the same time to my iPhone. Now it's one thing to connect both of them to your smartphone through the Bluetooth, but the question is, can you actually collect the EEG data from the Muse headband while simultaneously running the Neo Rhythm? Now if you're using the regular Muse app, you have to actually get the Neo Rhythm going and running in the background before you can switch back into the Muse meditation app to continue the neurofeedback session because the regular Muse app will not just run in the background. But if you're running Mind Monitor, you can have either one of them pulled up at the same time and have both of them running at the same time. So I found it difficult to actually switch back and forth between the different apps. So my preferred method was to have the Mind Monitor EEG on a tablet with the stand on a table and then just have the smartphone run the Neo Rhythm for the experiments. Now it was really interesting to see which Muse headband actually worked best with the Neo Rhythm in terms of comfortability and placement. Now where you actually set the Neo Rhythm depends on what settings you have it on. For example, the energy and vitality settings, you have the band of the Neo Rhythm over your forehead like this to stimulate the frontal lobe. Whereas if you have the Theta Meditation, you actually have the band over the back of your head like this to stimulate more of the back area of your brain. So it is interesting which setting you actually pick. For the Muse 1 and the Muse 2, I recommend using a stretchy band in the back. Now I got this from the Mind Lift system and it's really nice because you can put it on over your head like this and cinch it in the back to get a tight fit and make sure that you are actually using a wetted paper towel or a cloth to wet the, the sensors of the device so it can get the best EEG signal. So I would recommend using a stretchy band for both the Muse 1 and the Muse 2. And it actually really works best with the Muse S because the Muse S is just so great and that it is so comfortable, goes around your head like so, and you don't have to go around the actual back rubber portions of the Muse 1 and the Muse 2, which is what typically gets most in the way when you're using the Neo Rhythm. It's a lot easier to slip the Neo Rhythm over the, the front here or in the back. And because you don't have those bulky rubber settings on the Muse 1 and Muse 2, it actually works best to use the Muse S with the Neo Rhythm. That being said, Muse 1, Muse 2, and Muse S will all sync up to your smartphone simultaneously with the Neo Rhythm so that you can run these experiments at home. So once we had the Bluetooth connection issues figured out and actually the physical parameters of getting both devices on my head, I wanted to see, I wanted to test if the Neo Rhythm actually had a direct effect on the Muse signal. Was the Muse EEG signal being contaminated from the Neo Rhythm device 
directly or was the Muse device just picking up the brain waves that NeoRhythm was influencing? And when I spoke to Dr. Igor German on the interview that I put on the NeoRhythm device interview video, I asked him about this and he said that they actually ran experiments. They were able to do um, gold standard EEG before, during and after and show that whether the person had the NeoRhythm device turned on or off didn't actually directly affect the EEG signal which meant that the results that they found on the EEG randomized control trial experiments were simply the effects of the brain. Those were the brain waves affecting the EEG signal, not actually the magnetic pulses affecting the EEG signal. So I wanted to test this out and in order to figure out if that was true or not with the NeoRhythm in my experiments, I needed to see what a contaminated signal actually looked like. And I thought, you know what actually would probably work is if I took the Halo Sport 2, which is a device that I've covered in other videos, which uses direct electrical stimulation to see if that actually contaminated the EEG signal of the Muse headband. Because the Halo Sport 2 uses direct electrical stimulation from these little nibs to stimulate the motor cortex for its effect, it actually should affect the electrons on my scalp, which will affect the EEG signal of the Muse device directly so we can see a contaminated EEG signal. You, you can't use a direct electrical stimulation device and an EEG device at the same time because the signal will be contaminated, unlike theoretically what the NeoRhythm can do since it uses magnetic waves. So I wanted to test this out directly. Now getting the Halo Sport on my head with the Muse device was even more challenging than putting the NeoRhythm on simply because the Halo Sport 2 is a larger device. It, I did find that if you moved the electrical nibs forward, it had the most dramatic finding on the EEG signal. So taking a look at the EEG signal itself was very interesting. So with the Halo Sport 2, you can actually change the level of stimulation. And this has to do with the actual stimulation that you feel on your scalp. You actually do feel a little bit of electrical sensation through your scalp. So they wanna make sure that people can change the settings to influence your brain tissue more, but not feel uncomfortable in doing so due to the stimulation on your scalp. And what I noticed is that when I changed the actual level of stimulation, you got a big bump in EEG. I, I could see immediately that the EEG signal of the Muse headband was contaminated to begin with, but just to see even better, you could actually change the amplitude of the electrical signal coming out of the Halo Sport 2 and create very noticeable bumps in the EEG signal of the Muse 2, showing us that the direct electrical stimulation from the Halo Sport 2 was directly contaminating the EEG signal of the Muse headband. What was great is that using the NeoRhythm, we didn't see any of this. I didn't see any contamination of the EEG signal of the Muse headband when I was using the NeoRhythm. Now to be extremely scientific about this, I would need more quantitative EEG measures and we should be getting those with the Mind Monitor quantitative EEG system coming out within a month or two. But for now, we're just gonna have to take a look at Mind Monitor and see that I didn't see any direct electrical EEG contamination from the NeoRhythm. Good enough for me, this is exactly what the randomized control trials of Dr. Igor German uh, said in his papers and in their experiments. So now I felt confident to move forward with my own trials using the NeoRhythm and the Muse headband to see if the stimulation actually changed my brainwaves throughout the course of the experiment. Now, if you were really worried about contamination of the EEG signal from the NeoRhythm, you could take EEG readings before and after the NeoRhythm stimulation to avoid contamination of the EEG signal. But because I didn't really see much of that, I felt confident in moving forward with just taking the EEG signal during the NeoRhythm stimulation to see the most profound effects on my brain waves. So the first thing that I did was just take a 15 minute baseline of EEG, just me sitting there for 15 minutes. And then what I did is I recorded a 15 minute recording of the energy and vitality settings with the NeoRhythm while I took simultaneous EEG. And what I noticed on the graph right away is that when the NeoRhythm was on, it wasn't like it immediately changed the EEG signal, which makes me more confident that it was not polluting the EEG signal, that the changes in brainwaves that you saw over the course of that stimulation experiment 
really was my brain waves changing in response to the stimulation of the mid-intensity TMS that was coming out of the neorhythm. One of the things that came out of the randomized control trial that Dr. Igor German did with his team is that they saw with the concentration tests that without the neorhythm, usually you get increased levels of delta and theta, meaning that people get more drowsy, they get more fatigued and more tired as they go through these concentration tests. And what they noticed is that delta and theta actually were kept from going up during the uh, exam while the neo rhythm was actually stimulating their brain. It kept their brain from getting drowsy. And that is exactly what I experienced and it was so cool to see the EEG data reflect that. My delta and theta during the controlled experiment without the neo rhythm went up because I was sitting there for 15 minutes in the afternoon getting a little drowsy. Whereas when I had the neo rhythm on, I really felt stimulated. I felt like my drowsiness was not as bad, if not even stimulated by the end of the uh, 15 minutes. And what I saw on the EEG data is that the delta and theta were compressed down, but also beta and gamma were going up. And beta and gamma are exactly what the device is aiming at stimulating. You can see it on the setting. So it was so cool to see that reflected in the Muse EEG data reflected in exactly what the neo rhythm was trying to do. It was really cool to feel stimulated at the end of the trial using the neo rhythm and then see that reflected in the brainwave data as well. So I did do a couple of other experiments with the neo rhythm using the Muse and taking a look at different neo rhythm settings. One I did was enhancing sleep, which targets delta and theta, and you're supposed to use it for about 20 minutes before bed as you're winding down, which is what I did. And it was very obvious on the graph that there was increased delta and theta. And I can tell you subjectively from using the device before bed, it made me wind down very well before bed. I was basically nodding off during the session and went to sleep so quickly afterwards. And that wasn't just because I was getting ready for bed. You know, I'm pretty active before bed and then shut down pretty quickly. So doing that 20 minutes, I noticed that it made me a lot more drowsy before actually getting in bed so that I could sleep very well. And I slept very soundly that night. Another thing that I did was try the meditation sync settings, which targets alpha and theta. And I did notice during my meditation session using the Neo Rhythm that there was less distractibility from the breath, but maybe not as much expansive feeling as I do experience on some of my meditation sessions. And I'm not sure if that was specific to the Neo Rhythm. I need to do more testing. So now that I know the Muse works with the Neo Rhythm, I'm going to be doing a lot of meditation sessions with both of them over the next couple of weeks. And it should be interesting to use both the Mind Monitor as well as the regular Muse app and investigate how they're interacting and how this affects my meditation sessions. So I'll have that video coming out in a couple of weeks. But that's pretty much all for today. I've got a lot more content headed your guys' way. Also a new studio that I'll be shooting in soon that I'm really excited about. So I look forward to it. This is Dr. Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. See you next time.